Good evening. Welcome to the Herndon Town Council, April 23rd, night public hearing. <laughs> Just making sure you're paying attention. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our public hearing. It's my pleasure to call the meeting to order, and I ask that you join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have several um, sets of minutes um, up for consideration to approve this evening, and so uh, we'll get right to it. Um, is there a motion to approve the March 5th work session minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? That motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the March 12th public hearing minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? That motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the March 19th work session minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? That is uh, That motion carries. And finally, is there a motion to approve our March 26th public hearing minutes? So moved. I'll second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed. Thank you. We have uh, one presentation this evening, which is a proclamation recognizing National Small Business Week and National Economic Development Week here in the town of Herndon. And it's my pleasure to recognize Councilmember Baker to read the proclamation. Yes. Ms. Baker. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, every year since 1963, the President of the United States has proclaimed National Small Business Week to recognize the critical contributions of America's entrepreneurs and small business owners. The town of Herndon celebrates our small businesses and honors their positive impact on our local, ec local economy and the goodwill they foster in our community. National Economic Development Week was created by the International Economic Development Council, IEDC, the largest professional economic development organization, in 2016 to increase awareness of local programs that create jobs, advance career development opportunities, and improve the quality of life in communities everywhere. Therefore, the Mayor and Town Council of the Town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby proclaim the week of May 5th through May 11th as National Small Business Week in the Town of Herndon, and the week of May 6th through May 11th as National Economic Development Week to support the town's vibrant small business community and the economic developers who play an essential role in fostering these entrepreneurs. Further, the Mayor and Town Council of the Town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby recognize the contributions of economic developers and small businesses towards a strong, prosperous economy, and encourage our residents to join communities across the country in supporting small businesses and merchants throughout the year. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, are there comments from council? Yes. Yeah, so thanks for the opportunity to read this proclamation tonight. Um, so growing up, my dad was a small business owner, and this was very, uh, acutely felt by me and my siblings because we grew up in Endicott, New York, which was the birthplace of IBM. So pretty much every mom and dad in my, uh, in my neighborhood and in my school, I felt like everyone worked there except my dad who, <laughs> who ran his own business. Um, which, and that business included sometimes working on holidays and working on Christmas and just really recognizing the, the impact that had on our family, but also um, the freedom and independence that, that gave my father and, and our family. So I feel very strongly and certainly uh, in supporting the businesses in our community and how important that is to our growth. The fact that most um, Americans across the country actually work for what would be considered a small business as opposed to a large corporation um, and just how vital they are both to our local economy and the economy at large. So thank you for that. Thank you, ma'am. Other comments from council? Mr. McKenna. I, too, grew up uh, in a family where my mom and dad owned a newspaper shop and uh, lived six blocks away. And um, when you have a newspaper shop and your parents have a police scanner, you didn't really get away with anything growing mm -hmm. up because they knew everything going on. Um, but I did learn a lot. And um, it's extremely important to, uh, the, as, as Ms. Baker said, the, the uh, economic engine of this country, most of this country is... Uh, uh, made up of small businesses, including uh, one who's here tonight, uh, Mr. Paul Sella. I know um, your business has, has thrived in this town, and we certainly appreciate that. But we appreciate everyone who puts the hat forward because uh, this country is 
founded on people taking chances and starting a business is a big chance and um, we welcome that, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other comments from council? Nope. Uh, Mr. DeCall. I really do support businesses always and I've always been a big supporter and advocate of entrepreneurship and um, I really felt touched when I saw this proclamation. I do believe entrepreneurs, uh, you know, small business owners can create economic mobility. They create opportunities, whether it's a job or, you know, uh, selling and buying opportunities and all those things, and that, that really creates uh, the economy. So um, whatever it takes to help and support more small businesses in this town, we are up for it, and we will do whatever it takes to support. Um, and um, I, I feel honored to be here today that we are doing this proclamation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I concur with my colleagues. We're very fortunate here in the town of Herndon that our tax base is about 50% uh, business and about 50% residential. It fluctuates by a few percentage points, but that really gives us a strong economy, um, and it really helps us balance our budget because the burden is not solely on residential um, homeowners in the town. Um, most of those businesses are small businesses, and uh, Mr. Delagular just told me what, under 200 people is a small business-ish, something like that. Not, don't hold them to it, but something like that. That seems pretty big to me. We have a lot of businesses in our town that are five, six, 10, 12 people, and that really is the, the crux of our economy, and we appreciate all that they bring to our, to our community. So it is my honor to uh, celebrate this month. Dennis Holstein and I will be out visiting some of our small businesses over the next few weeks, um, welcoming them to town. Um, we do have Dennis Holstein, our economic development manager, is here this evening, and I believe he's going to introduce... Uh, Dave Richardson, and I won't, I won't give your speech, so. And then um, following your comments, we will welcome the dais down for the presentation. Thank you. Um, good evening, Mayor and Town Council. My name is Dennis Holstey, the Economic Development Manager for the town. Um, with me this evening, there are three members of the town's um, Herndon Economic Development Advisory Committee. Um, Dave Richardson, who you'll hear from in a few moments, he's from Fulton Bank. Also Peggy O'Reilly, she's in the back. And then also um, John Boylan with the Dulles Chamber of Commerce is here as well. Um, Dave Richardson is going to give a pre, uh, brief um, comments about um, Economic Development Week and National Small Business Week. Thank Great, you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I'm Dave Richardson. I'm a member of the Town Council's Economic Development Advisory Committee, and I also live in the old Drainsville Hunt Club neighborhood of the town. As Dennis mentioned, I work at Fulton Bank on Eldon Street where I work on business with businesses throughout Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware on their requests for credit. As Dennis said, and, and you all have talked about earlier, economic development is one of the hallmarks of a healthy and vibrant community. In Herndon, businesses contribute approximately 44% of the general property taxes and a much higher percentage of the other local taxes. Businesses are invested in Herndon. With the increased development surrounding the Herndon Rail Station and the downtown redevelopment project, this will hopefully increase. Businesses in Herndon provide products and services in injuries in industries such as professional services, hospitality, finance and insurance, real estate, information technology, educational services, retail trade, and the arts, all things that are growing in our economy. The town of Herndon is also a small business incubator. Of the roughly 1,300 businesses that call the town of Herndon home, almost 71% of them, or approximately 1,000, employ fewer than 10 employees. 94% of Herndon businesses employ fewer than 50 employees. And our hope is these businesses continue to grow and prosper and new businesses follow. Herndon businesses employ 17,000 people that come into the town to work, shop, eat, and eat every day. They also contribute to the fabric of our town by sponsoring activities such as youth sports teams, Herndon Festival, and Friday Night Live, among other activities. On behalf of all the businesses in the town of Herndon, I want to thank the mayor, the town council, and the town staff for maintaining a welcoming and vibrant environment for all businesses in the town, especially its small ones, 
who one day hope to be big ones and fulfill the dreams of their entrepreneurs and owners. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here this evening. Um, is there anyone else that's going to speak? No. Okay. Well, with that, I would like to invite down the entire council, the manager and town attorney, um, Dennis, and any uh, anyone that's here from the Economic Development Advisory Committee, the Chamber of Commerce. If we have any small business owners or just small business fans in the audience that would like to join us, please come on down. Who is a small business fan? I'm a small business fan. <laughs> All right. Uh, that does bring us to our comments portion of the agenda. Mr. Town Manager, do you have any comments for us? Yes, Madam Mayor. A couple things. First off, uh, apologies to those watching at home. Um, if you were watching on the website video stream, you had the correct meeting. If you were watching on the cable provided uh, feed, you were watching the April 9th meeting for a while, but it's, it has now been straightened out. <laughs> and that's why I darted out really fast. Okay. So I, one of, one of, my eyes and ears sent me a text. It going, was a it's great the wrong meeting. meeting. Um, just to be clear, this is, even though Marge, you didn't get it right the first time, it is the April 23rd, 2019 <laughs> meeting you are now watching. Uh, so it's this all is Margie's live. fault. We all got good. it. Um, no. <laughs> No, uh, the only other thing I, I just want to point up is just give you a quick update on the downtown is uh, is, is our want at the public hearings. Um, the applications before the HPRB are in, they are complete. They are scheduled to go for a public hearing on May 15th, 2019, 2019 in this room. <laughs> um, they will be at the work session on May 1st, 2019 uh, to discuss that, those applications. And so... We're on to the next step. All right. And that's all I have. Thank you, Madam. Great Mayor. news. Thank you very much. I will move to council. Uh, Mr. DeCall, did you have any comments for us this evening? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, one thing, the Nepalese American Heritage Day was celebrated really well. Uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, council members and vice mayor, for coming there and attending that event. Um, and um, people enjoyed it and felt a real good inclusion, and they were really appreciative of the fact that Town of Hernan actually declared that proclamation. Um, the wish is there are many other communities out here, and, you know, um, we sh they should definitely reach out to them, empower them, bring them out of their you know, comfort zone or small community and uh, recognize them so they, they get more empowered and contribute to the small town we call home Herndon. So thank you, thank you Herndon, thank you town council, thank you mayor, and thank you to the uh, town citizens for accepting small Nepalese community as part of the family, thank you. Thank you sir, Ms. Baker. Sure. Um, I'm excited about Herndon Elementary School Career Day tomorrow. That's always a really fun day. And as a former teacher, getting to be around students again. So looking forward to that. I know several members of council will be there. Um, we have the countdown for Friday Night Live one week from Friday. The weather is already cooperating. So hopefully that continues. Looking forward to seeing you all outside on the town green on Friday, May 3rd. Um, thank you to the town Parks and Rec Department for a really 
um, fun Easter egg hunt on Saturday. Um, it was, you know, for kids up to age seven, it, um, there were lots and lots of kids there. We lucked out with the beautiful weather. It was really well run. Um, the Easter Bunny was there, so it was a hit. That was fun to be a part of. And then finally, six weeks from Thursday is um, D-Day. And as you know, our Herndon High School band has been selected as one of very few high schools throughout the country that will be participating in the 75th anniversary uh, commemoration of D-Day, a very significant day in our history in 1944. Um, I'm really lucky to be able to attend as well. So I'm leading a what we're calling a shadow group, meaning a bunch of adults and community members who don't want to be chaperones but want to attend, um, many of which have, um, have band students in. Most of them are, are parents of band students who also want to go. And there are 51 of us attending. Um, and there's another 44 members in Margaret Jamborski's shadow group, which represents veteran families from the USS Herndon. I know I've mentioned this before, but as it comes closer, it's six weeks from Thursday. Um, the, the, the group, we are getting really, really excited to be able to celebrate and be with our students um, and, and watch them be part of uh, this really historical moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dalga. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, for the folks that didn't get a chance to listen to the work session last week, just um, my insight on that. We had a, probably the most productive meeting as a, as a body uh, since I've been on this council. Um, we certainly debated a few items, <laughs> discussed a few things, and I think we're, we're definitely trying to align the short-term decisions with our desired long-term outcomes. Uh, but we still need a lot of input from, from the folks out there. So keep, keep those um, emails, comments coming. We, uh, we want to make this our budget. Uh, so we, we definitely ask for you to keep that, uh, that comments coming. So thank you. Thank you oh, sir. one oh, last thing. Yep. The Nepalese thing was amazing. Great yep. food, great music, great <laughs> costumes. Amazing. Well done, sir. <laughs> thank you. Mr. McKenna. Uh, just uh, on Sunday, uh, the Herndon Village Network will be celebrating its fourth birthday uh, at ArtSpace. Uh, for you, those of you who don't know, uh, full disclosure, I'm a board member, but the Herndon Village Network is an organization that provides free rides to people who are 55 and older to places like the grocery store or uh, the doctor's office and things like that to give uh, people in, in, in that age uh, group the independence that they deserve. Um, so uh, if you want more information, you want to volunteer or donate, we certainly uh, don't, uh, don't turn that down, but it's at herndonvillagenetwork.com. Org. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Friedrichs. Um, I also want to compliment Mr. DeCall on an amazing event. Um, it's pretty rare that uh, in the town of Herndon, I would think, you get to meet the ambassador, the U.S. ambassador to Nepal and the Nepali ambassador to the U.S. Um, Harry Bandari was there from um, the Maryland House of Delegates. He's one of the four. Um, Nepali Americans who's serving in um, elected office in the U.S. Pradeep Dakal is another. Uh, it was a very exciting day. Um, you could really tell that 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 people were really feeling that, that Herndon is theirs, that they are a part of Herndon, and that was a beautiful thing. Um, I also wanted to um, allude to. Uh, well, actually, to congratulate Joanna Ormisher for being recognized by the city of Fairfax with the John Mason Artistic Achievement Award for her many years of arts advocacy, leadership, and coordination of all the many arts groups within the city and in connection with George Mason University. She's enriched the cultural life and brought pleasure to so many residents. So definitely want to um, give a shout out to one of our um, many incredible civic organizations and this kind of achievement is always a lovely thing. Thank you. They can't have her back. They know that, right? They keep telling me she's pretty awesome. But, yeah. Okay, just checking. I'll, I'll put in a call. <laughs> uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Thank you. So I spent Saturday morning with a group from the Federal Water Quality Association. I sit on a committee where they hand out scholarships to high school students uh, um, going to college in the fall and these people are going to be working on the environment and we specifically look for water quality folks. One of them is named after my late husband Harvey Ellum. So we spent uh, about four and a half hours, had a very nice lunch from a local restaurant delivered 
And then I got to go to this awesome Nepalese American event at the Herndon Middle School and uh, stayed there and got entertained and fed and met, met a lot of new people. It was a great event. Thank you for including me. And last Thursday, if you didn't go, the farmer's market opened, so head on down. And if you know any seniors, might not be too late, but it's getting crowded. The senior senior prom that the Herndon Rotary puts on every year, um, May 4th is the date, and we hold it at St. Joe's. We have over 350 people that have RSVP'd already. So uh, we always look forward to that. It's a free event that the Herndon Rotary puts on. And for some people, it's the only prom they've ever gotten to go to. So it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, well, I want to uh, mention a visit that I made today uh, with Dennis Holsey. He and I, part of what we do is go out and meet with new businesses and existing businesses here in the town of Hernan to welcome them to, them to town um, and see how we can make their experience as a member of our community better or how we can improve our functions as a, as a business-friendly community. And today we went to um, a, a company called Mascot Books, which is a publishing company right here in Herndon. I had no idea. And as a former reading teacher, you know, I was super excited about that. So um, the... President and CEO is a member of the Nepalese community, so we were talking about um, your your election here, and he's interested in meeting you, so I'm going to connect you two, um, but I wanted to give you a heads up before I did that. Um, they are publishing books on every type of subject you can imagine, and they are a small company. I believe they said they have about 20 employees in their, in their office over there. They've been here about seven years, um, and they got their start because he's a Hokie fan, and coming back from a, a football game in Virginia Tech, his daughter, um, who's now um, in college, wanted a story about the Hokie. So they wrote a story on the way back from the, the game, and that's why they got their start as mascot books. So they started doing them for lots of different colleges, and I said, well, do you have an Auburn one? And they said, of course we do. And so... He gave me a copy of Dream Big Obby. He told me that their biggest uh, sellers for the uh, mascot books are Auburn and Alabama. Alabama, roll tide, <laughs> Sheila. But we know this because it is... <laughs> <laughs> because that is probably the biggest rivalry anywhere in the country. And the, the third uh, biggest seller is um, the Ohio State, which is another crazy, rabid following. But the funniest part about getting this book was that uh, the, the woman who worked there who gave it to me is a UVA graduate. You might recall UVA knocked Auburn out of the final four. So she was really pleased to present me with something called Dream Big Obby. Nice. But, yeah. I, <laughs> but yeah. I took it as, as she meant it. Um, anyway, it's very exciting. So look them up. Mascot Books, they're involved with Scrawl Books, who is over in Reston, and they're looking at doing some pop-up events, and we um, talked to them about possibly uh, partnering with Rowan Tree and um, Ellen Street Tea Shop, which we'll have to tell them that we told them that. But um, it's very exciting, and we know that people are looking for bookstores to pop up in the town, so Dennis and I are doing what we can to try to make that happen, and I just have to say, War Eagle, this was so fun. So um, with that, um, I will move to comments from the audience. This is the portion of the agenda um, when anyone can come forward to speak on an item that is not listed as one of our public hearing items. That would include our general or consent items. You have up to three minutes and should state your name and address for the record. The green light will come on. When, it, um, when the red light comes on, please try to wrap up. If you are here to address any item related to the budget, uh, there will be a specific time for that later in the evening. So is there anyone here to speak on that would like to speak to the council on any item that's not the budget? Ms. Glakus, come on down. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, Town Council Members. I'm Barbara Glakus, 935 Barton Oaks Place. Um, I thought the Nepalese American celebration was great also. Thank you very much. I'm here because I am the Drainsville District's representative to the uh, Barbara Varone Volunteer Award Committee. Um, Barbara Varone was a native of Germany who had immigrated to the United States. She could speak several languages. She ultimately worked for Fairfax County Office of the General Registrar. She wrote brochures and designed pamphlets to help inform the voting public. And she basically fought for the rights and privileges of all citizens to participate in the electoral process. So this award is... Um, is uh, in honor of her. It's an annual award, and we like people from all over the county to be nominated for this award. It's, uh, it's not just for any kind of volunteerism. 
course, you have to be a Fairfax County resident. You have to demonstrate the appreciation for diversity of our community. And, and the main thing, again, I said it's not just for any type of volunteer, uh, volunteers, and specifically it is for people who exhibit patriotism by participating in the electoral process, educating others about the rights and privileges of all citizens to participate in the electoral process and or participate in voter registration outreach. So it's uh, those volunteers who do that, that type of work. So the, uh, if you'd like to nominate someone, uh, any of you, anybody in the audience, everybody on the listening television audience, uh, in order to find out more information about how to nominate someone, you just Google Fairfax County Barbara Varone Award. That's her last name is spelled V-A-R-O-N, Barbara Varone. And uh, you'll see information as to how to nominate someone. And the deadline is June 11th. I'll leave uh, one of these uh, pamphlets with the clerk, and I set a few out on the table outside. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And can I ask the clerk to forward that information to the council so that we have it ready to, to share? That would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Glakis. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on any item that's not a public hearing item? Anyone? Okay, thank you very much. We will move right into our public hearings, uh, most of which have to do with our budget. Um, I have a lot of process to outline for you guys, so bear with me for just a minute. Um, but the next five items on our agenda relate to the town manager's proposed fiscal year 2020 budget. Um, we will resume the public hearings, which have remained open. Um, so for the record, the public hearings on the items relating to the proposed fiscal year 2020 budget were continued by the council from April 9th, which means that the public hearings on the record remained open and the public hearings resume this evening. First comments received will be entered into the record, which has already happened, followed by disclosures of council. Then I will recognize Bill Ashton, our town manager, uh, followed by... Uh, followed by questions of council. Uh, we will resume separate public hearings on the tax levy, the meals tax, and the use charges for water and sewer, followed by concurrent public hearings on the fiscal planning resolution and the appropriations ordinance. At the end of each public hearing, I'll ask for a motion followed by council discussion and votes by roll call. Uh, voting requirements are for the tax levy, which is the, the meals, uh, I'm sorry, the property tax requires a two thirds vote of council, which is five. Um, the remaining, um, the remaining items require uh, four. That would include the meals tax, water and sewer charges. The fiscal planning resolution requires a majority of those present and voting, which is four if all members are present and on the dais, so do not go anywhere, everybody. Um, the appropriations ordinance requires a majority of council, which is four. And I will um, go back through some of that as it makes sense as we go forward. Um, with that, um, let's begin. Um, all comments have been entered into the record that we've received so far, and we do, um, each council member does have a disclosure. Um, they sound very similar, but we do, we are required to read them into the record um, individually, so bear with us for just a moment. Um, I will begin. Um, for the record, throughout the year, I may be invited as a guest to attend events hosted by various organizations, some of which may receive donations or in-kind benefits from the town. I am able to participate in the budget deliberations regarding nonprofit organizations fairly, objectively, and in the public public interest. I have filed the appropriate disclosure with the town clerk and the town attorney. Um, and there are other disclosures. So um, I will just start with Mr. McKenna and go down the dais if that's okay. Mr. McKenna. Madam Mayor, for the record, I am an unpaid volunteer for various organizations in the community, some of which may receive donations or in-kind benefits from the town. Throughout the year, I may be invited to attend events hosted by these organizations as a guest. I'm able to participate in the budget deliberations regarding nonprofit organizations fairly, objectively, and in the public interest. I have filed the appropriate disclosure with the town clerk and town attorney. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor, for the record, I am an unpaid volunteer for various organizations in the community, some of which may receive donations or in-kind benefits from the town. Throughout the year, I may be invited to attend events hosted by these organizations as a guest. I'm able to participate in the budget deliberations regarding nonprofit organizations fairly, objectively, and in the public interest. I have filed the appropriate disclosure with the town clerk and town attorney. 
Madam Mayor, for the record, I'm an unpaid volunteer for various organizations in the community, some of which may receive grants, donations, or in-kind benefits from the town. Throughout the year, I may be invited to attend events hosted by these organizations as a guest. I am able to participate in the budget deliberations regarding nonprofit organizations fairly, objectively, and in the public interest. I have filed the appropriate disclosure with the town clerk and town attorney. Madam Mayor, for the record, I am an unpaid volunteer for various organizations in the community, some of which may receive donations or in-kind benefits from the town. Throughout the year, I may be invited to attend events hosted by these organizations as a guest. I am able to participate in the budget deliberations regarding nonprofit organizations fairly, objectively, and in the public interest. I filed the appropriate disclosure with the town clerk and town attorney. Madam Mayor, for the record, I am an unpaid volunteer for various organizations in the community, some of which may receive donations or in-kind benefits from the town. Throughout the year, I may be invited to attend events hosted by these organizations as a guest. I am able to participate in the budget deliberations regarding nonprofit organizations fairly, objectively, and in the public interest. I have filed the appropriate disclosure with the town clerk and town attorney. Madam Mayor, for the record, throughout the year, I may be invited as a guest to attend events hosted by various organizations, some of which may receive donations or in-kind benefits from the town. I'm able to participate in the budget deliberations regarding nonprofit organizations fairly, objectively, and in the public interest. I have filed the appropriate disclosure with the town clerk and town attorney. Thank you very much. Uh, so with that, I will recognize our town manager, uh, Mr. Bill Ashton, uh, for any comments for us. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Um, I just want to, before we go through what is before you tonight and the changes that have been made, I just want to go and recap the evolution of this process, which truly takes four months to get it ready for prime time. Um, it started back at your first uh, work session uh, upon being seated as a council where we talked about what you thought your budget priorities ought to be so we could draft a budget priority resolution that you could hand to me as a framework on which to build the budget that I would propose back to you. Um, these, these priorities included funding activities that would advance the 2035 vision. Specifically, the sustainability plan was important to you, the downtown was important to you, the art center was important to you. You wanted us to continue to maintain a focus on technology and, and efficient service delivery. You further wanted us to demonstrate a commitment to and an investment in the town employees. You wanted us to emphasize employee skills development, include succession planning. You wanted us to keep a competitive marketplace for our employees in a highly competitive zero unemployment environment to make sure we retain the best and can attract the brightest. And that was one of your uh, driving pieces of uh, priorities to me. The third was a update, working on updating our budgetary policy to include taking a look at our annual budget and the rising costs that we're seeing and certain flat revenues that we were seeing and take a look at additional revenue opportunities if needed to, to meet some of the demands on us. You also wanted us to decouple the meals tax from as a policy element from certain specific earmarked items. Um, you further wanted us to look at the parks and recreation cost recovery model. You also wanted us to look at uh, making sure we were adequately preparing for Metro Rail and the redevelopment around the Metro Station and the redevelopment of the downtown were also very important to you. And finally, you wanted us to look at our life cycle maintenance and how we handle that and taking a look, make sure we're investing back in the assets that we currently have, uh, replacing them when needed um, and, and trying to take those a mishmash of, of things that were budgeted in our capital budget and in our operational budget and truly operationalize um, all of those life cycle maintenance costs so that because they truly are operational costs. Since that time, and you adopted that, that resolution and gave it to us as a framework, we had some other very stark drivers that shaped the conversation moving forward. These included that we had a loss of about one, one and a half million dollars in business professional and occupational licensing tax receipts that had come in. Now that is an alarming number except that we, because it's a volatile uh, revenue source, we historically only budget about 400,000 of that against our budget. Uh, the other 1.1 million usually goes into the general fund, funnels through into fund balance, and then we pay for next year's capital 
out of that. But with that evaporation, that $1 million, we were losing that ability to fund ongoing capital. At the same time as we got that news, actually on the same day I got that news, we also got the news of the Spring Street uh, Road project. Was, VDOT was projecting it two and a two and a half million dollars short, a shortfall when they went into the land acquisition phase. And we had to find a way to make up that shortfall or lose the project. Um, now we are gonna go out and look for revenue uh, sharing grants to help offset some of those costs, but we have to be prepared to put skin in the game on some of our transportation projects. Since that time, we've also seen a $5 million shortfall on the Eldon Street project that is coming up in three or four years. Now granted, we have some time to work some grant magic on that, but we, I believe, based on the competitive nature of the grant process, are gonna have to put more capital skin in the game if we want these, these very important transportation projects to move forward. Um, these two drivers kind of really reset the table and reshuffled the deck as to what we were looking at as a budget moving forward. Um, we sat down with you in February individually. We talked, you met with the budget team, we, we, we exchanged these ideas, we, we told you about the various things we were staring at. We kind of gave you an upper level view of where the budget was heading. We took your input and we started to incorporate that into um, our budget deliberations as a budget team. This is where we departed from, previ or from previous years. Next, instead of delivering a budget on April 1st and starting the conversation with you then, I, I was pretty solid as to where the budget numbers were gonna be on March 5th. So we delivered you a budget framework on March 5th without all the fluff, just the numbers. And we started a conversation about how do you wanna shape this budget? How do you wanna take this budget? Because it may be my proposed budget today, but it's your budget once adopted. It is the budget for the town. So putting your fingerprints on it and shaping it the way you, you wanna see it. Um, we told you about the budget, how we met the budget guidance resolution, how we addressed the critical drivers, and, and all, the, all the various inputs we were getting from your individual meetings were also accounted for on March 5th. Um, this set the table for us to for have further discussions. Uh, we, second work session in March, we also discussed it. We held public hearings uh, to where people could come in. We were taking email. Uh, coming in on budget comments that were being read into the record, and you all had gotten copies. On April 1st, per the code, I released the full-blown town manager's proposed budget. This was met also with the, all the appropriate legal advertising, which we'll get to more of that in a minute. Um, we also sent a brochure to all the homes in town as to what we were intending to do. Um, we did press releases, we did social media pushes. Um, we truly wanted to get the word out to try to get folks coming here to talk to you all about it and testify before you. Um, as far as the advertisements went, even though I looked at a 1% incre increase of 1% on the meals tax from 2.5 to 3.5 as a way to, to meet that shortfall in capital financing, for the long term. Um, I wanted to give you the opportunity to further shape the budget as you saw fit. So we advertised 1.5 even though the budget was only asking for one. Um, so that is where we stand right now. The meals tax was advertised at 4.0. Uh, that gave us latitude as we were having our, our discussions. Um, the work session last week, we, we talked about the work session at the beginning of April. The work session last week I thought was a highly productive meeting. Uh, you all gave me a consensus as to how you wanted to see this budget moving forward. And the puts and takes from that meeting are what's before you tonight. So in the resolutions and the ordinances that you see in front of you, the puts and takes associated with some of the higher level things you wanted to see, you wanted an additional quarter percent on the meals tax to 3.75. We're advertised at 4.0, so that is perfectly fine. You wanted us to lower the donation amount in the clerk's budget to 200, Two, from 218 in my proposal to you to 211 200 you got you were very specific on the cash donations and the in-kind donations which are enclosed in the legislative package you have in front of you you wanted the extra $6,800 difference between the 218 and the 211 we put in contingency as just a way for us in case some things change or fluctuate over the year, we can roll that money out as, as a way to, to bridge that gap. Or if nothing comes up, it rolls into fund balance at the end of the year. You also decided to, 
to push for $56,000 for, for crosswalk projects, important crosswalk projects were, that were the fruits of the PBAC committee. Um, this is included in the puts and takes you see in front of you. You wanted to fund an assistant town attorney. That's in the, the 125,500 in the puts and takes in front of you. And then you restored full funding to three parks and rec programs, family fun days, downtown events, and kids at hope. Um, and that is also the puts and takes associated with that are also in the legislative package in front of you. All said, those increases are $225,000, which is a quarter point on the meals tax, which as I said earlier, is now the, the ordinance in front of you is at 3.75%. On behalf of the budget team and the management team, I, I wanna thank you for embracing the process. It was a new process. We tried some new things, and you and you all really gave us some really solid feedback. You 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 truly were looking out for the community as you were doing it. Um, we we learned a lot from you, and we incorporated it into what you have in front of you. I also want to take this opportunity to thank this year's budget team. Um, John Casella, our budget manager, and Jenny Tripley, our director of finance, are standing members of the budget team, and we rotate a large and small department head onto the team each year. This year, Chief DeBoard served, as well as Ann Curtis, our chief information officer. They, they all did a phenomenal job. They truly brought a lot to the table in the discussions. Um, they brought insight, they, they asked great questions, and they challenged our management team to truly defend what they were asking for. And I wanna thank the management team as we move forward in, in that budget process because they were responsive, they were quick in turn around and turning their answers around to us, and they made those deliberations that much easier for us to get to a budget proposal for you. Um, so with that, I will gladly take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Are there questions for the town manager? Anyone? Uh, I had a couple of clarifying questions. Uh, questions just uh, mainly for the benefit of the audience. Um, for ordinance um, 19009, which is the levy of the uh, real estate manufactured homes and other subjects for fiscal year, um, are, there, there, are there any changes to any of these rates from the previous year's budget? No rates are changed other than the meals tax rate in the second, res the second ordinance you will take up tonight. Okay. Um, there was a bump in the assessed values, um, but that with new construction was about a 4% increase. The assessed value increase was a little over 2% across the board. But uh, with the exception of the meals tax, none of the other tax rates The have rates changed. all remain the same. Okay. And you uh, had... Look, if I could just pause. Uh, sure. Except the water and sewer rates are, they are going up in small in by some small increments based on a plan you all adopted last year, that each budget year we will take a look at that and, and increase it accordingly. This is to try to get our water and sewer fund back into a, a better cash flow position. Okay. Um, we have great capital reserves, but our cash flow is, is, has suffered when we haven't raised rates in 2011. We have the lowest rates in the region. Even with the adoption night, we still have the lowest rates in the region. Okay. And um, my uh, second question is, um, you mentioned that uh, your proposed budget was um, proposing adding 1% to the meals tax, but we advertised up to 1.5, and the reason for that is that you can only um, increase a tax up to the amount that is um, advertised, so that the whole purpose of that was to give some leeway if we wanted to adjust that. That is correct, because the first work session, or one of the work sessions we had in March, we had some unfunded priorities that didn't make it into the base budget that I offered up to you, and I didn't know where the sense, where the sense of counsel was gonna end. Uh, we were getting a lot of input in email. We were getting some, a lot of input from you all. So we decided to go ahead and let's advertise up to the four. Is a, is 4 a total. 4 percent total. Um, to give you some latitude once we got into this to truly shape the budget how you wanted to see the budget shaped. And that's so even though it was said 4% in the ad, right now the ordinance in front of you is 3.75 to meet all the changes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, were there any other questions from council? Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Um, so uh, I will resume the public hearing, uh, which was held open from April 9th on Ordinance 19009 to levy taxes on real estate and manufactured homes and other subjects for the fiscal year 2020 budget. Um, I'll call for comments from the audience and it is specifically to address the council on just the rates that are in this ordinance uh, before us. Um, if you're here to discuss the, the tax, the, the meals tax, water and sewer and donations, that sort of thing, I will make it very clear in the next uh, couple of public hearings when and you should come forward for that. Is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak on the real estate tax and other levies? 
okay? Thank you, seeing none, I will close the public hearing and move to council level for discussion and action. Uh, Ms. Uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Madam Mayor, I move approval of 19-0-09. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve made by the Vice Mayor and seconded, I believe, by Ms. Friedrichs. Okay, I don't think your microphone was on, but I heard you. Um, okay, uh, discussion on the motion. Madam Vice Mayor. Uh, I'd like to thank all the staff for their input and making this a nice, easy, transparent process. And fortunately, we didn't have to go up on the uh, real estate rates. And I know that I, as I talked to people in the community, that was an area that many people said they really didn't want to see that increase. So i um, happy that we were able to do that, but we were also able to look at how to continue the services that we all want to keep here in Herndon. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Anyone? No? Okay. Um, with that, um, I will um, ask the clerk to please call the roll. The motion on the floor was made by the vice mayor, seconded by Ms. Friedrichs, um, to approve 19.009, the levy of real estate taxes and other levies. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, vice Mayor Olam? Yes. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember D'Agula? Yes. Councilmember DeCall? Yes. Councilmember Friedrichs? Yes. Councilmember McKenna? Yes. Mayor Merkel? Yes, that motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Moving right along. Um, is there a motion? Um, hold on. I got ahead of myself. Uh, the next ordinance is 19 um, o, uh, 10, which is the meals tax. Um, I will resume the public hearing held open from April 9th. Um, is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council specifically on the meals tax this evening? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward. Uh, state your name and address for the record or your business address if that's what is appropriate. And you have up to three minutes to, to um, give us your comments. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome. Um, my name is Kristen Murphy. I'm the general manager of the Washington Dallas Marriott Suites Hotel at 13101 World Gate Drive here in the town of Herndon. I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you tonight and share my strong opposition to the proposed increase in the town's meal tax from two and a half percent to it sounds like three and three quarter percent um, that you are considering as part of the budget. I feel that the food and beverage and hotel sector is being unfairly singled out singled out again by increasing this tax. As I recall, the meals tax was first imposed approximately 10 years ago, and we were told that the funds were going to be used to market and promote restaurants in Herndon and in turn increase business. There was no increase in my business as a result. On this occasion, you are saying it is being used for ongoing capital improvements, which will certainly not directly increase my business either. By being located in the town of Herndon, I am at a significant competitive disadvantage um, against the other large hotels in the area. My customers are already have to pay an additional 6.5% in taxes between the town's occupancy tax and meals tax that currently exist. Um, this change will only increase that disparity. The hotels that I compete against are located not far away. One's directly across the street from my hotel. One's on the other side of the toll road. Others are just within one or two miles of my hotel. Most of them have addresses at say Herndon, Virginia, but only my hotel has the additional tax burden that's being imposed on my guests. Every year, more and more customers and companies want to see the entire cost of a meeting, an event, or a room before they make their buying decision. Every time I am asked about the disparity in the taxes um, and you know, versus their other proposals that they've received, um, on numerous occasions, I've lost the business because of that. When that happens, the town of Herndon is getting zero tax dollars from me for that revenue that I wasn't able to get. We've supported the town of Herndon um, and the people and activities of the town for numerous years. We were a longtime supporter of Friday nights um, live. We've been a supporter of the Herndon Festival and a sponsor for the past eight to 10 years. We've donated thousands of toiletries to local Girl Scout troops and other organizations to create stockings to hand out to the shelters over the holidays. We have partnered with Hutchinson Elementary School to provide food bags for their in need students to take home over the Christmas holidays so they have food when they aren't at school. Um, we worked with the town of Herndon to allow you to put the town of Herndon monument sign on our property and we pay for the electricity for that to be lit up every night. Um, I hope you will consider the increase, to, um, the impact the increase of the 10 meals tax has on my hotel and the other restaurants and businesses in the town and come up with a different solution to provide the monies needed for the budget. 
Okay. Thanks for your time. Thank you for coming this evening. We appreciate your comments. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on uh, the meals tax item, ordinance 19010? Mr. Boylan, welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. It's uh, 730 Eldon Street, John Boylan with the, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> Isn't it ironic? It's not like a fly in your Chardonnay, but it is the day you proclaimed the small business success is the day that you hit many of the restaurants with almost 4% tax. Very difficult. I know this decision wasn't taken lightly, but I'd like you to consider the difference between the hard and the, and the easy decision. Uh, I've got one myself. I've got members on one side of the street that are really injured by this. I've got folks on the other side that are kind of snickering because it's gonna help their business. So I'm torn with my membership right down the middle but I'm concerned about where we're headed. It's easy to raise the meals tax. In fact, we looked at this last year, I remember sitting in this room and it was thrown out last minute as an opportunity to fix the budget. Here we are again, right back for the meals tax. I think the tells with the council are pretty evident. The tell will be next year, if you do it three and three quarters, it'll be to four or more. It'll be parking. It'll be for the residential. It's gonna continue. I think you really need to look at how do you tighten your belt? I know it is a lot easier to expend my belt or wear some sweatpants, but they don't look very good with a suit. The fact is you need to do a little bit more exercise, you need to look at plenty of places. Now's not the time for me. I know you have done it in the work session, but there are other places that we can tighten our belt and look at this. We need to think about how this affects businesses, and really key is, this, is the restaurants. It's core to who we are, and it's not just external people that use it. All the town uses it, and it, it helps in, in join what we call you know, Herndon Herd Friendly. And I think the restaurants are a place we want to support and not continue to tax as the place to find extra money. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on this item, the meals tax? Yes, sir. Good evening again. Dave Richardson, 685 Old Hunt Way in Herndon. Uh, as opposed to earlier, I speak as a private citizen at this for this uh, discussion. Uh, I know the town faces a difficult decision here, but I would ask that you put the restaurateurs in the town of Herndon, and you not put them at a disadvantage to their competition outside of town. Uh, in speaking with the town staff on this, I know they have looked at the alternatives and I thank them for that. Um, but and, and they also feel that the majority of this tax is not paid by town residents, but paid by visitors to the town. Town residents are still paying some of it, um, but I feel that the increase places a burden on our restaurateurs, an unfair com competitive disadvantage it, that it places them in. So I'd ask you to please look harder at this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on ordinance 19010, the meals tax levy? Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Okay, thank you. We will close the public hearing and uh, move um, to council level for discussion and possible action. Is, is there a motion? So moved. Uh, to, to, to approve? Yes. Okay, second. Okay. Okay, we have um, a motion uh, to approve uh, the ordinance made by Council Member Delagula and seconded by Ms. Friedrichs. Discussion on the motion. Um, and again, just for clarification, this tax has not been raised since 2012? I believe that is correct. Okay. Further discussion? No, I just no. wanted oh, okay. to make sure. Uh, Ms. Friedrichs. Um, I am, uh, as a person who pays taxes, very reluctant to raise taxes. <laughs> um, I, we eat out a lot, but um, the fact that we need to make sure that the budget is doable, that we provide the services that the town offers at what is really a fairly reasonable rate, um, I think we are forced to raise taxes in some way, and this is one of the taxes that the restaurateurs are not themselves paying the tax, although as um, the um, uh, woman from uh, Marriott, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, <laughs> but um, as you mentioned, you, you are at a competitive disadvantage when you're giving packages. 
Um, but at the same time, um, you do benefit by roads and you do benefit by sewer and water and all the things that we provide in this town like everybody else does. Um, so um, I, I am deeply reluctant to, to raise taxes. And I don't, uh, to, to Mr. Boylan's point, I don't think it's at all likely that, um, that we will be raising taxes again next year. That would be really surprising to me. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion? Mr. DeCall. I actually agree with uh, Council Member Frederich. We talked about this a lot uh, in every work session and every public session uh, because we were all reluctant to raise any kind of taxes, but we also understand our citizens deserve better quality of life, you know, better infrastructures, and we also move forward to better position ourselves with the development going around. So this was the decision which was very difficult for us to take. Uh, I want you to understand that. And uh, obviously, another thing is, we, we, we looked at many other uh, options like real estate taxes, meals taxes, and any other cutting expenses or increasing the revenues. And this is what we found and agreed that this impacts our uh, taxpayers' money less uh, because, you know, uh, Herndon is 44% business. So a lot of people come here to, to work and they eat in the restaurant. So people who pay the taxes may not be all uh, town of res uh, Herndon residents. So putting all those things into consideration, I know we've explained that before also, but I just wanted to reiterate this one again that we, 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 you know, came to this decision, but again, the discussion is going on. Thank you, um, Madam Vice Mayor. <clears throat> yes, um, I remember when we first proposed the mills tax in the town of Herndon, I was really totally against it until I talked with uh, one of the staff here in Herndon, and they happened to be on the Herndon Police Department, and they explained that I needed to check out the police report. Just any time, just pull it up and see how many accidents happen in town and how many of those individuals do not live in the town that are in those accidents. And we as citizens, we're paying for all of that. So it does help us offset and share the pain of having one of the best police forces in Northern Virginia. Our officers even, we have gone forward with the leadership of our chief we actually have the cameras. Not all the police officers in the metro area have that, but ours do. So you're living in a state of excellence. We also go in the hole with the community center. We, we could just keep going in the hole, but things like the meals tax will help us with all, all of our things that people value in the town of Herndon. And that's the entertainment, the roads, the quality of staff that we have here, which I think is absolutely awesome. I grew up in a community in Alabama where they had practically no taxes and they had practically no services either. So I like the fact that if I do need the police, I hope I don't, but if I do, I know they're gonna be at my house within seven minutes. I do live in the town. When I had people in my home, we were judging a scholarship. We didn't go, wait a minute, let's get this, you know, we could just get it right over the edge of town and I don't have to pay the taxes. Didn't even think about it. I'm going to support the businesses here in town because they have, over the years, supported my kids and their high school sports boosters teams, as well as all the other nonprofits here in this community. So I'm always ready, able, and willing to support them and never think about a meals tax because their food's incredible, and I'm willing to pay it, and it helps keep our community one of the top-rated communities in the area, and I want it to stay that way. Other comments from council? Mr. McKenna. Um, I can say that this was probably, um, in regards to this discussion, it, it, it was toughest for me, because I do uh, frequent a lot of the, the businesses in town, and um, it's, 
it, it tears at me because, again, I come from a family where um, one of the reasons why I ran for council when I was 24 was because uh, our downtown road wasn't being uh, taken care of and um, I was tired of it, so I ran. Um, but this is a situation where, um, and in the work session process, I will say that the things that I got from it was a commitment from the town on the long term, and also council on long term views. Um, things like when for grant applications, making sure we have things like percentages in place so um, there's no arbitrary numbers involved with that. Um, things like, uh, and uh, even in the future, um, I'm on the phase two committee for Dulles Rail, uh, taking a look, may possibly um, looking at HTOC um, in regards to uh, that district, but just making sure that uh, we buffer ourselves because, um, you know, again, a lot of the, this budget this year was predicated upon um, an anomaly, um, but we have to eliminate those anomalies uh, by mitigating risk. And um, again, this isn't an easy discussion because uh, I've was fighting tooth and nail to keep it from 1.5, um, trying to get it to one. Um, but again, um, I'm still torn on this, but know that this wasn't an easy decision, um, but it was a decision based upon I think people's, um, I think everyone had the best intention coming forward. So at least I wanted you to know where I, my mind was sitting at that moment. So thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Uh, well, I, I appreciate the comments from my council members. I also appreciate the comments from the audience. Uh, raising a tax rate is never an easy decision. And in fact, since I've served on council since 2010, we have only raised the tax, any tax once, and it was the meals tax by one cent back in 2012, I believe. Um, I, I want to give a little bit of, of um, a little bit more of the picture of why this decision, I think, uh, came to be with the council. Um, I don't completely agree with every single way we're spending every dollar that is allocated in the budget, but it's about compromise, and there's seven of us here and 24,000 of you who live in the town, and that doesn't even count our 17,000 people who come in to, to work here every day. Um, the bee pole day, the day the town manager said that so ni nicely, we found out we were a million in the hole on bee pole. Oh, and this, this uh, traffic uh, project was going to be $2 million more than we thought. That was a really terrible day <laughs> for, for right in the middle of budget season. Um, the, the reason I think the manager suggested the meals tax was for s several reasons. One is that it does not entirely uh, focus on the landowners and, and uh, property owners here in the town. It does spread that around to the 17,000 potential other people who come into our business center every day to spend their money here, who are using our roads and who are using our police force, who get there way sooner than seven minutes, which so it is just a, a great thing. Um, the meals tax has also been one of the most stable, predictable, and growing sources of res revenue that the town has had over the past uh, at least 10 years. Um, that is in stark contrast to the B poll, which is very volatile, and we don't ever know the exact amount that's going to be. We still don't know the exact amount. The business and professional license uh, fees are due March 1st, I believe, and they come in, and it's, it's a very volatile situation. I see Jenny nodding. Um, at the current level, which is 2.5% meals tax, we are among the lowest uh, jurisdictions in the Commonwealth that do have a meals tax. Most, um, most of the jurisdictions that do have a meals tax, um, which are all cities and towns, counties um, can only have it if they go to referendum. Is that correct? 75% of the counties have it also. Um, most of the cities and towns have upwards of 4 to 6, maybe even 7% of a meals tax. So. Um, so we were, I think our thinking was in part to look at if we're, the B poll come, the B poll fees come from people who are not town residents who are already paying property taxes and other fees, trying to replace that lost revenue with a, a, a revenue stream that would also come from not just our town residents. Um, having said that, I am super sensitive to what you said, um, being right across the street from Crown Plaza, which people don't realize is not in the town and is not subject to the meals tax or the additional hotel tax that the town employ employs. And all of our other hotels are facing that same thing. Um, I know it's not the bottom line, and it, with a lot of, I know that's what it's all about is the bottom line. But if there is any way that um, the mayor and council and our economic development department can help you in um, trying to uh, help you get the word out there to your potential clients why it would be worth paying maybe a little extra to have the town uh, 
to have their event within the town, we are certainly willing to try and help you with that because I don't want you to think we take this lightly and that we're just like, oh, well, you'll get over it. We don't feel that way at all. So please reach out um, to me or to Dennis or to the town council. We would love to try and help you with that if it's any consolation. But I think this was a not an easy decision. This is only the second time I've ever considered raising a tax rate. And um, I think that it's clear that it's not something that we've made lightly and I don't anticipate that it's something that's gonna become a trend. So with that, if there's no further discussion, I will call the question on the motion and I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. It was a motion to um, approve made by Mr. Delagula, seconded by Ms. Friedrichs. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Olam. Yes. Council Member Baker. No. Council Member DeAgula. Yes. Council Member DeCall. Yes. Council Member Friedrichs. Yes. Council Member McKenna. No. Mayor Merkel. Yes, and that carries five to two. It's all about compromise. Next up, let me make sure I'm on the right page is ordinance 19001, which is our sanitary sewer and water. Um, I'll resume the public hearing once again, and um, if there is anyone in the audience who would like to address the council on this item, please come forward. You have up to three minutes. State your name and address for the record. Is there anyone that would like to come forward and talk about everyone's favorite topic, water and sewer? Yes, good. I'm so glad. <laughs> it doesn't get the credit it deserves. It's so important. Uh, I agree. Thank you. Hi, say um, I'm Alexandra Heidler. Um, I just moved in about six months ago with my husband who works for Amazon. Welcome. Um, thank you. We've really enjoyed it here and coming from a place without taxes or anything in Florida. Um, we, mm. I find it very <laughs> nice here. So thank you guys for doing your jobs. Um, I have a question about the recycling and refuse, uh, refuse, excuse me, and, and waste. Um, I saw that the fee was being increased for the first time in a long time. I, I sent my comments via email and was yes. asked to come here instead. So I, I'm kind of aware of the impact, the global impact that um, recycling is is having a burden on our global economy and in America. China's not accepting it anymore. I used to live in Indonesia. I see where that waste goes. I see all the impact. So it's important to me, and I would like to know what is the town doing or is it on the radar or where could we take part as citizens to help and lower the impact of recycling because it's just going to get more expensive or get burned and then we're going to breathe it in okay thank you <laughs> thank you i'm sorry did you did you say your name and address for the record uh, i apologize i may not have reminded you i'm sorry uh, alexandra heidler my address is 160 laurel way herndon virginia perfect thank you um Okay, is there anyone else that would like to come forward and speak on this item? Nope. Okay, seeing none, I will move to council level for discussion and uh, possible action. Is there a motion? Madam Mayor, I move 19-0-11 for passage. Second. So that's motion. Okay, we have a motion uh, to approve 19011 made by Mr. McKenna and seconded by uh, Ms. Baker. Discussion on the motion? No? Anyone? No? Ms. Friedrichs? Without clean water and sewer, we are none of us very happy. Um, this is something that hasn't been, how long has it been since we raised rates? Do you remember? Well, prior to the study, it, it had been about seven or eight years. Okay. And since we instituted the study, um, you raised them initially and then you raised them one other time. And this is the third iteration of a, of a trying to right size the rates to the service that we provide. And just to remind folks watching at home, this is a um, enterprise fund, which means all of its costs have to be covered by the fees it charges. This is a business. And up to this point, the business was running a little bit in the red, which we can't have that happen. So part of the study was to right size our rates. We are the lowest in the region. We retain being lowest in the region. Even if we do all the rate increases that were suggested, we'd be the second lowest in the region. That's before the that one jurisdiction is planning to raise their rates too. So um, this is something to get the rates correct. And as far as the recycling fees, I've kind of looked at Tammy Chastain and she will be meeting up with the citizen here momentarily. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
other discussion on the motion? Okay, so I'm glad Tammy's going to follow up. I was going to say, shoot me an email. We'll set up a meeting, but you'd rather meet with Tammy because she actually knows all about that. So if there's no further discussion on the motion, uh, which was to uh, pass 19.011, made by Mr. McKenna, seconded by Ms. Baker, I will once again ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Olam. Yes. Council Member Baker. Yes. Council Member Aguila. Yes. Council Member DeCall. Yes. Council Member Friedrichs. Yes. Council Member McKenna. Yes. Mayor Merkel. Yes. That motion carries. Thank you. Uh, so next up, I will resume concurrent public hearings. Um, they were held open from a April 9th on Resolution 19G31, which is to consider the fiscal planning resolution and Ordinance 19012 to appropriate the funds to implement the 2020 budget, establish the pay plan, and reserve ongoing and capital funding for this fiscal year. Um, is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council on these items? And this is the appropriate time to address the council on donations and um, nonprofits. Is there anyone that would like to come forward? You have up to three minutes. Okay. All right, see, done. Um, I will close the public hearing um, and we will move to council level for discussion and action. I will take separate action on these two items. The first, um, is there a motion to adopt resolution 19 G 31 so for the purpose of fiscal planning during the fiscal year, uh, 2019 budget. So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion to approve made by the vice mayor, seconded by Mr. DeCall. Um, and this again is for the fiscal planning resolution. Uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Thank you. Yes, as uh, Council Member said earlier, this was a very, our last work session was extremely productive and we put everything out on the table and a lot of compromises and we were able to come up with this. So I'm very happy to endorse uh, everything that we put into this and the additional things that staff had wanted that weren't going to make it in if we did not do the mills increase. So. Mills tax increase, not mills increase. Thank you. Oh, mills increase too. You know how we are. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. DeCall or anyone else? Did you have comments? No. Okay. Um, so um, seeing none, I will close uh, the discussion and um, ask the clerk to once again please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Olam. Yes. Council Member Baker. No. Council Member De Aguila. Yes. Council Member DeCall. Yes. Council Member Friedrichs. Yes. Council Member McKenna. Yes. Mayor Markle. No. And that motion uh, passes five to two. And finally, we are in the home stretch, um, which is um, I will entertain a motion for 19G31, which is to adopt uh, the. Uh, let me figure out what we are. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I misspoke. It is 19012. So there's a lot of pages here, guys. Um, um, is there a motion to adopt uh, Ordinance 19012 to appropriate the funds to implement the fiscal year 2020 budget, establish a play, pay plan, and reserve ongoing and capital funding for this fiscal year? So moved. You guys want to arm Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll give it to the vice mayor and mm -hmm. seconded by Mr. Delagula. Right. See, I, I'm no fool, man. I know. Okay. Uh, okay. We have a motion to approve made by the vice mayor and seconded by Mr. Delagula. Discussion on the motion. Anyone? I guess if we've passed all these others, we might as well have a plan to pay for it. Um, so, um, okay. So seeing no discussion, I will call the, or not call the question. I will ask the clerk to please call the roll once again. Thank you, Mayor Merkel. Vice Mayor Olam. Yes. Councilmember Baker. Yes. Councilmember D'Algula. Yes. Councilmember DeCall. Yes. Councilmember Friedrichs. Yes. Councilmember McKenna. Yes. Mayor Merkel. Yes, and that motion carries. And I believe we have ourselves a budget. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you very much. All right. Um, let me find what page we're on. Okay, next up, we have, we'll hold concurrent public hearings um, on the next three items, and then it will have a separate vote on each. Um, they are Ordinance 19014 to consider a proper condition amendment PCA number 190. 
1525 Grove Street, Virginia Dominion Energy Substation to allow the installation of a freestanding telecommunications facility. Ordinance 19015 to consider a proper condition amendment. Number 1902 at the same address, uh, Virginia Dominion Energy Substation to allow the installation of a freestanding telecommunications facility. And finally, you guessed it, 19G33 to consider special exception number 1902 at the same address to allow the installation of a freestanding telecommunications facility. I will open the public hearings on these three items and recognize Bryce Perry, our Deputy Director of Community Development for the staff reports. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the Town Council. The applicant for these three cases wishes to install a telecommunications facility at 525 Grove Street, um, a property that is currently improved with a Dominion Energy Electrical Substation. Essentially, for that use to be allowed, the zoning of the property has to be um, updated uh, with the two proper condition amendments, and um, a special exception must be issued in accordance with the zoning ordinance. These three cases, uh, proper condition amendment 1901, proper condition amendment 1902, and special exception 1902 uh, do just that. Um, the two PCAs are required because the zoning of the site is regulated by two previous zoning map amendments, that's ZMA number 02102 and 02103. Um, those two ZMAs permit the, permitted the development of the property as it exists today. So any improvements that occur to the property that are not in substantial conformance with the generalized development plan that was part of, of those original zoning map amendments would require a rezoning, in this case, the, the two PCAs. And um, uh, uh, we, don't, we don't see PCAs that often, but they do follow your, your standard rezoning process. So it went through a staff review, went through a planning commission review um, in an advisory capacity, and then, of course, it ends here with you all for a final decision. The um, zoning ordinance permits special, by special exception, freestanding telecommunications facilities in all standard zoning or, uh, districts that includes residential and commercial um, when certain standards are met, so those are all laid out in the zoning ordinance. They have to do with lighting, with color, with size of the antennas, with height of the of the monopole, with screening, and a, a number of other things. Uh, the special exception approval may be conditioned, which is what is going to be recommended in this case. And the the two PCAs uh, for this case must be approved prior to the special exception approval. So if there's any sort of delay or denial of the PCAs, the special exception wouldn't be able to move forward. So for this case, 525 Grove Street, um, located, highlighted here, uh, located just north of the WNOD Regional Trail. Um, it's a approximately 1.5 acre site. It's split zoned, so the western half of the site is zoned commercial service, and the eastern half of the site is zoned office and light industrial. The adjacent properties are mainly office buildings with surface parking lots. The closest residential is the Darlington Oaks neighborhood. It's about a fifth of a mile just west of Van Buren Street. Um, over in this area. And there is a uh, WNOD spur trail that runs along the western boundary. It's, it's off-site from the subject parcel, but it, it runs a, right along the western boundary of the subject parcel. So the facility as proposed includes a 125-foot tall uh, monopole that would have the platforms and the, and the racks for the antennas and the antennas themselves. On the top of it, um, it's, it's located roughly in the, in the center of where the um, next component of the facility would be, and that's the a 100 foot long by 15 foot wide screened uh, ground compound. That's where all your um, cabinets will be, generators most likely. And um, it is screened with both landscaping and a, as proposed, with both landscaping and a fence. The fence will require a zoning modification, um, two zoning modifications, and I'll, I'll get into that in a little in a little bit here in a few more slides. The proposed facility um, access to the proposed facility is gained off of Grove Street. There is an existing asphalt and then gravel private drive, um, which is highlighted here. And the project also includes the removal of a number of existing trees and shrubs and the replacement of each of those at, at a one for one ratio. Um, the new plants are all going to be located in the area that is highlighted here. Um, two other things to point out with this graphic, the, the green um, stripe um, line is where the existing off-site trail is located and the area highlighted in blue is the extents of the existing substation. So the area highlighted in yellow is, is the, that uh, fenced-in area. 
Okay, um, the site today consists of a landscape buffer now. It's about 30 feet wide. There are deciduous evergreen trees and shrubs, which is shown here in the large photo. Um, also shown here is the existing asphalt trail. It's varied width between six to eight feet wide. Um, there is a uh, stormwater facility, a bioretention pond just north of the proposed facility. And there is a drainage swale that runs along um, where the proposed facility would be located. The substation is currently screened not just by the landscaping, but by a 15 foot tall masonry wall on the north side and a chain link fence on the south, east and west sides. And the access drive I mentioned earlier is shown in this photo here. It's, it's mostly gravel um, <clears throat> with some grass. And the, that bioretention pond I mentioned is just shown off to the right of that, just south of that, of that access drive. So as part of the application, the applicant did provide 11 different photo simulations. Those show what the tower would look like, a rendering of what the tower would look like from various view, view sheds around town. I just have a few of them here, one taken from each, um, uh, each direction. So from the north, this is the north photo simulation. I apologize that they, these are quite dark. From the north, from Eldon Street, um, the arrow points to the, to the simulated location of, of, the, uh, of the proposed monopole. The bottom photo is taking, taken from the west from Van Buren Street. Um, this was asked um, to be provided because this is essentially the, the view that the residences would see from Darlington Oaks, the closest residential area. Top photo is the view from the south from Spring Street and the bottom vote photo is the view from the east from Grove Street. So there were uh, notable changes to um, the project as it went through the review process um, to address staff comments and to address planning commission comments. I've highlighted, highlighted a few of them here. Um, the additional land uh, landscaping, replacement landscaping was provided. Um, I mentioned at a one for one ratio, that was not originally the case. Um, there were a number of trees that were gonna be removed that were not gonna be replanted. So the area that's boxed out here in green shows the existing 30 foot wide landscape buffer. You can see here that the proposed facility, which is again highlighted in yellow, is gonna be entirely within that. So of course, um, how the landscaping was gonna be um, handled was, was very important here. Uh, this shows where the, um, essentially where the landscaped area will be retained. Um, one thing to point out here is a gap on the, uh, in this area here. That is necessary um, to allow access into the facility from that um, access drive to a gate that's on the north ed edge of that enclosure. A physical barrier was added at the end of the driveway. There was a lot of concern um, as we went through this process that vehicles would be too tempted to drive offsite and onto the, the trail um, to gain access to the facility. Um, to address that, the applicant added two bollards to prevent any kind of vehicle movement past that property line that's shown here. And uh, lastly, the original application um, included a ch chain link fence with barbed wire for the enclosure and that was changed to a decorative uh, black metal fence. So I mentioned zoning modification earlier. Um, there, are, there are two zoning modifications that are being requested as part of the proper condition amendments. For this facility, the zoning ordinance requires a solid masonry wall to screen the, the ground uh, component of the, of the facility. And this originates from two sections of the zoning ordinance. Uh, one um, requires, includes the buffer requirements and for all zoning districts, and the other one is specific to the screening of telecommunications facilities. Um, the applicant cited concerns for security um, when justifying the modification requests given that the uh, solid masonry wall would create some hidden areas um, behind it. Um, and uh, also cited was the fact that the landscape buffer, which is uh, bolstered with new plant material, would, would provide a substantial um, screening as well. Staff does agree with that assessment by the applicant and does support, um, along with the planning commission, does support the modification uh, as proposed, the two modifications as proposed. <clears throat> so staff is recommending approval um, of the uh, of both PCAs, there was a draft ordinance that was provided that includes the modifications, <coughs> and also is recommending approval of the uh, resolution for the special exception, with the the conditions that are listed here. 
um, one for substantial conformity, which essentially is says that the the project as it goes to construction has to remain in substantial conformity with the the plan that was referenced in the special exception. Uh, there's a condition for permitted use, which limit, limits the use to again what is shown, what is included in the application for the special exception. Um, there are two conditions uh, requiring site plan review and architectural review board review. There is a condition regarding stormwater management, and that's essentially saying that those stormwater facilities that are um, directly impacted or right, very uh, close to the uh, proposed facility are going to be um, thoroughly analyzed and vetted at the site plan process to make sure there's no negative impacts to that. There's a condition regarding access to the site, which um, we, we have those two bollards that were added, but we really wanted to just make sure um, that there wasn't going to be that offsite access onto that trail. So there's a that condition was added there to prevent that. And then there's the um, uh, three conditions um, for inspection, exploration, revocation, of course, setting the circumstances for when it can be inspected, um, when it can expire, when it might be revoked. Um, and that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions uh, for staff on this item? No? Okay, thank you, Mr. Perry. Um, these are public hearings, um, so I will invite the applicant's agent to come forward and address the council if they would like. Good evening. <clears throat> Thanks for sticking with us through the budget. <laughs> no problem. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. My name is Harold Bernadzikowski. I am with Network Building and Consulting, LLC, representing Vertical Bridge Development, 6095 Marshall Drive, Suite 300, Elkridge, Maryland, 21075. Um, just wanted to real quickly touch on a couple things. Uh, one of the questions I think that you had discussed at your work session last week was the generator and the potential noise. Um, I did look at our uh, T-Mobile's spec sheets for their generator. Um, it's um, 65 decibels at seven meters, which would be short of the property line to the west um, measured from the compound that the monopole will be located in. Um, We'll make sure that we submit uh, the official spec sheet with our site plan application during that review um, and for consideration with the uh, ARB. Um, other than that, we are in agreement with the wording and conditions in the ordinance and the resolutions. I uh, just wanted to take a quick uh, moment to thank Bryce for all of his uh, diligence with the review of the project applications and working out the design details with us. And with that, I'll open up to any questions you might have for me. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions for the applicant this evening? Anyone? Okay. Well, thank, thank you, you for being here. We appreciate it. Um, so uh, I will call on comments from the audience. We will uh, take con uh, concurrent comments on all three, and then we'll take separate action on each ordinance. Um, is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak on this item, or any of these three items, actually? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and move to council level for discussion and separate action on each item. Is there an, uh, a motion uh, for ordinance 19014, PCA number 1901? So move for approval. Second. Okay, discussion on the motion made by the vice mayor, seconded by Mr. McKenna. Discussion on the motion. Anyone? No? Okay, uh, Ms. Friedrichs. Sorry, I just wanted to say that um, uh, I had the pleasure of watching the Planning Commission um, discussion of this, and um, the, I, I want to thank the staff for um, doing an amazing job at making sure the design details are as they should be. Um, they, uh, things that were raised by the Planning Commission were stormwater appearance, safety, noise, landscaping, access to the generator. Um, this is just um, uh, very well done, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion? Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? That motion carries. Um, is there a motion uh, to approve Ordinance 19015? So moved. <laughs> discussion on the motion? Anyone? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? And finally, um, is there a motion to approve Resolution 19G33, which is the special exception number 1902? A second. A motion to approve made by Mr. Delagula, seconded by Mr. McKenna. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? 
And that motion carries. Thank you for bearing with us through the process. Congratulations. Uh, that brings us to our one general item, which is Resolution 19G34, to initiate a zoning ordinance text amendment, number 1901, Plan Development Urban Residential. I'll recognize Dave Stromberg, who is our zoning administrator for the staff report. And I won't steal the staff report by explaining what an initiating resolution is, like I did last time. I'll let you do that. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Merkel, members of council. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is an initiating resolution for ZOTA 19-01, um, which is going to be a new zoning district. And initiating resolutions are a legally required step uh, before the staff can take any zoning text amendment before the planning commission and then ultimately back to the town council. Uh, these are usually on consent agenda, but it's always nice to come up and speak to the council. Uh, so this is this ordinance specifically is meant to implement the South Eldon Street area plan, which was just adopted by the council. And that really sets the vision for what the community expects to see out there. And the zoning ordinance is the tool that would actually implement that. Um, so this district specifically is a townhouse multifamily style district. Uh, that will implement the visions of that plan. So if you approve this resolution, it will go in front of the Planning Commission for a minimum of one meeting, and the public will be able to provide their input. Okay, thank you. Do we have any uh, questions for the Zoning Administrator? Anyone? All right, thank, thank you, you, sir. <clears throat> um, so I will entertain a motion. So I, move to, uh, I move to approve resolution 19. Gotcha. Second. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion to approve made by Mr. DeLagula, seconded by the vice mayor. Discussion on the motion? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm really excited about this, yeah. as you can tell, so thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, I know uh, one of the buildings, it's the one behind the Eldon Street Market where the giant used to be and H Mart is. Uh, the uh, development back there, the business offices, has sort of pushed this forward. And now we're going to look at all the things on South Eldon Street as many of those buildings have gotten older and may be changing uh, the usage in the years. So I too look forward to this. Um, yeah, I, I concur. It's exciting. The Planning Commission will flesh this out very nicely for us and we'll get it back in a few months and see what we have. So thank you for, for being with us. Um, and with that, I will call the question. All those in favor of sending this on to the Planning Commission, say aye. 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 And those opposed, that brings us to our consent agenda, which includes a proclamation to recognize ba Building Safety Month and several um, appointments to boards and commission. Is there a motion to approve? Madam Mayor, I move we approve okay. the consent agenda. Second. Okay. <laughs> All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? All righty. And that concludes our agenda this evening. Madam Mayor, seeing no other business, I'll move we adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> uh, we got the Vice Mayor and Ms. Baker. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. And we stand adjourned with a budget at 8.31 p.m. Congratulations, nice. everybody. Nicely done. Right.